Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be an episode about uh, the the potential for uh, a major pattern change I talked about a little bit yesterday. I mainly focused on the threat for big storms. Well, uh, today is just kind of like an update video. I guess it's a day later, so you know I'll just update you on this. Uh, consider subscribing to this channel and consider liking this video. It really means a lot and I really love your guys' support. Or leave some, you know, nice comments. I read every single comment and it makes my day. And I may not reply to you all, but I read every single one, whether it's bad or good. Mostly good, but, you know, once in a while it does occur. So thank you for doing that. So right now we're looking at Tropical Tidbits, a GFS model. And the GFS model uh, has been showing very, very significant cold. Or maybe not as, you know, much snowfall. Or maybe not as much threat for a big snowstorm. But it has been showing a lot of cold. So let's look at what's going on right now. We just had a powerhouse of a system uh, track through the Midwest. I mean, it was massive. D a tornado across northern Dallas. It brought such strong winds over here. I mean, literally, we went from a day of uh, uh, a week ago, the trees were still green. And then throughout that week, they ch you know, they changed into yellow. But then right now, the past two days, uh, we had we've had insane winds. I mean, all day yesterday, all day today, and still going on, has died down significantly, but it's still blowing hard, and it's just really significant. All the leaves have fallen off, whether they were, you know, uh, turned yellow or red or orange or not. I mean, there's a lot of green leaves lying down, because some of this wind literally just tore it off. But nevertheless, the storm left behind a cool air mass, as you can see by these blue colors, possible frost and freezes from any location. And this will continue to go throughout the country uh, for a good portion of the, of, the, uh, of the week. And you can see then it starts dying down. We may see a little bit of a ridging uh, through the weekend, but by this time in... Uh, the the European model, which I'm not showing you right now, I will show you in just a minute. The European model is showing a big snowstorm around the, uh, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame for the Midwest and just a big storm. The GFS is showing a definite cold dive of air around the Halloween time. You can see 30th, 31st. And that would really, really bring temperatures down uh, way, way chillier than we've even seen so far. And then maybe a little bit of a moderation. You can see one little dip right there and maybe more of a little bit of a ridging pattern. Or we'll see exactly what occurs then. But for now, or at least the early part of November seems very, very chilly. You know, like the first couple of days of November. And, you know, I will make a video soon about talking about November. That will be a tough one as well to predict. It may be warmer, maybe cooler. Some signs are showing it may be warmer. Some indications are showing it could be cooler. Uh, it's, it's a tough one, just like October was. And you can see that uh, this is the European. So, again, it shows that big system coming through. Lots of cold air with it. But then, like... Around that Tuesday, October, uh, Wednesday, Monday, you can see right there, uh, around a Halloween time frame, we see a big dip in the jet stream, and that could really produce uh, a snowstorm, according to the European model. If we were quickly to look at the model viewer on uh, weather models by weather.us, a uh, great, great modeling uh, website, you could see they have the European here, uh, possibly some snow, by the way, across northern Texas in the next couple of uh, uh, days or even hours, next 42 to 48 hours, <clears throat> possibly some snow, and you can see that doesn't really do much. That system lifts eventually north across the weekend, across into the Midwest and Northeast, but no snow with it. Where the real deal unfolds, according to the European, is right here, you can see Tuesday, uh, this is the 29th, and look at that, this would potentially be a giant, a giant system, exactly a week from today. And or this would just be um, exploding. I mean, I don't know if you could see that. Let's see if we could uh, change. My computer's a little bit better than yesterday. So it could be a little bit quicker. Let's see if we could just go to, uh, let's just stick to the United States and see. And I want to show you that this system, okay, so, you know, here's that little snow across uh, Armadillo, Texas, and the Panhandle of Texas. You could see there there probably be a couple of inches from that, which it doesn't happen, you know, too not too often, but... It does occur, especially since Armillo um, is right by uh, the mountains, and that will really bring some of that cooler air in. And uh, that's why it's you sometimes see snow way earlier than most places, you know, like Wisconsin or Michigan. 
Uh, but um, you can see that uh, we start seeing like these snow showers, these blustery conditions, and eventually this all kind of combines. And look at that. I mean, very heavy snow. These are pretty heavy snowfall rates, one inches, two inches. And uh, that, that, you know, that, that is very heavy snow. And if this were to occur, or this would be a very potential potent storm. And look how far the 32 degree line would get. A good portion of the country would be absolutely slambasted by this. And the Euro European model is showing, uh, you know, a very snowy, cold scenario as well. But the GFS is just more on the cold side rather than the, Euro than the uh, GFS. Uh, that, rather than European. Here's the 6 to 10 day outlook from October 28th through November 1st. Uh, this is actually after or during that cold outbreak and look at that, just look at it. <clears throat> Below average conditions for a good portion of the country. Uh, I mean just ridiculously chilly conditions. Uh, this, you know, this doesn't really show the magnitude of it because this is only their confidence or probability. But usually the more confident they are, or, you know, it's not like borderline below average. It's it's pretty well below average. So those things you could say are indirectly, directly um, uh, correlated or related, which makes no sense, but it does, trust me. And you can see that the northwest will be drier throughout that time, while the east could be above average. Or they're hinting at some, you know, this possible area right here being above average, as the, that's where the storm could be rising and forming a lot of its precip. We'll see about that. Um, 8 to 14 day outlook through November 5th, you could still see below average for a good portion of the country, excluding the southeast. Um, but again, the drier conditions in the west and spread a little bit further east, and the east still seems very above average. So, you know, good news for people that have been having the trout. It seems like you will be getting out of that, uh, you know, fairly soon or throughout winter at the very, uh, very least. Let's see, 30, uh, 30 day, uh, 30 day outlook by the Climate Prediction Center. This was issued October 17th. This is uh, for the month of November. Sorry, I meant to show you the uh, the three to four week outlook, but uh, let's see that one. I want to see. Okay, yeah, see, this is what I'm going to show you. This is what they show kind of from November 2nd through the 15th. You can see that they're showing a pretty good area of being below average across the, uh, the Midwest, but the West being above average. To what extent this is true, we don't really know, as they're talking about many different things here, but it's, it's a lot of these are kind of like guessings, or, you know, a guessing game, which is weather overall, but, um, you know, this is just where uh, things kind of start getting really, really bad, and some of these things may not be really accurate at all, as uh, the below average, you know, maybe completely not even existent, or maybe in a completely different area, or the above average maybe not existent or in a different area. So that's all still up for interpretation and uh, really kind of nailing down. Uh, let's look at the. Um, I wanted to show you the snow snowfall from the system. I mean, some of the snow. Yeah, look at that right there. If this were to occur, uh, the very very heavy snow from this. Uh, possibly, you know, 20, 18, 20, 21, 20, up to two feet of snow, or if this European model was was accurate. And uh, some indications are, you know, the European has kind of uh, been consistently showing it. So the GFS has been a little bit kind of trying to adjust to that. But the GFS is kind of stubborn and doesn't want to show that system at all. Uh, that's not what it thinks will happen. But notice also how uh, across some portions of Texas, uh, we could be looking at uh, at some snow, and I already addressed that earlier. But let's uh, go into the panhandles. It's gonna take a little bit. Let's see, Texas. Oh, yeah, let's just go to Texas and see this. Uh, let's go to the uh, just Texas overall, and you can see if we were to load this, uh, it just comes very quickly in a good portion of the country, or sorry, a good portion of the panhandle, including Oklahoma and Texas, you could see six, seven, five inches of snow, which is pretty impressive what the European is showing. And I think that usually what the European does, European is usually better with snowstorms. So, you know, I think that it's going to happen, this especially since it's not that far out. And speaking of the GFS, uh, or uh, the big storm that's very far out, I think that will occur as well because the European has been consistent and European is just better than a GFS in terms of long range uh, snowstorms. So if you're, you know, wanting the details on this, it seems as if the coldest, coldest air uh, of the year will come in just around Halloween time, around the Wednesday, Tuesday to Thursday of next week. It seems, you know, whether or not there will be a snowstorm still, that's a big question, but uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of, I guess, um, 
recent data has been showing that that snowstorm may or may not occur but you know whether or not it occurs it's going to be a bit cool off probably for sure it's just it may uh, the snowstorm may be along with it or not at, at this point if i was a betting man uh you know i would i would probably say that there's going to be a some sort of system maybe not as strong as the european is showing or maybe even stronger we will just have to wait and see but uh you know some people are saying that oh it's just you know models guessing what well, you know all the time you know it's it's a european it's not a long range it's technically or you know theoretically it's or technically i should say is a five or a medium day model medium day uh medium sorry medium range model which usually tend to be more accurate than a longer range the gfs usually sacrifices some of its accuracy just for being long range while the Euro european sacrifices its range for uh being more accuracy being more accurate so when it does show a snowstorm consistently in a short range you know it's it's more likely to occur than if the gfs is showing a snowstorm so uh thank you guys so much for watching consider liking this video consider subscribing to this channel and i'll catch you all guys on the next episode see ya bye